So glad you could join us today. I'm Marlon Bowling with you, your tour guide to the Ag Commodities. Well, the markets are open, and this is government report day, of course. Uh, we're waiting for the supply and demand report to come out at noon Eastern time. We'll have live coverage right here uh, when those numbers come out, and we'll see if they have any surprises or not. Typically in April, it's kind of a yawning event, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, keep it tuned right here. We will uh, find out if the government has anything that can move the markets or not in today's update. Now, I do want to take a look at our opening uh, trades here this morning. We'll start with the corn, and our quotes are provided by Bar Chart. On the uh, corn on the May contract, it's just a penny higher. Not doing too much today. We're at 6.55 per bushel. December new crop corn, just one tick higher, a quarter of a cent to the upside at 5.63 per bushel. Now, moving on to our soybeans, this is the one that is getting all the attention today. Uh, for whatever reason, soybeans are really surging ahead. And we have the May now 20 cents higher at 1507 and a quarter, almost on the high of the day. And November is 13 and a half higher at 1323 and a quarter. As I was discussing earlier in the broadcast here, uh, we had the corn and the wheat taking off yesterday while soybeans were left behind. Uh, soybeans were down a little bit. But now today, soybeans taking the baton and running with it. And uh, corn and uh, wheat is just kind of uh, listless, I guess you could say, today. For example, in Chicago, you have May wheat just a half cent higher at 679, and July is actually down a half cent right now. On our quotes from Bar Chart in Kansas City, wheat in May is two and a quarter higher at 878 and a quarter, and July is up a half cent. Minneapolis wheat currently has May trading one and three quarters higher at 876 and three quarters. However, July is down three quarters at 874. Well, we have Brian Hoops on the line and he's with Midwest Market Solutions. He's in Springfield, Missouri. So interesting stuff going on here. Why would you see such a big surge in soybeans ahead of the report release today? It either A has to mean somebody is in there buying a bunch of beans today behind the scenes that we don't know about yet, or uh, I don't want to go there. Uh, you know, could it be a leak of data? I, I don't know. Gosh, government leaks? I don't think that's ever happened before. But I mean, I. There's all kinds of stuff flying around this morning about why beans are taking off. What's your thought here? Good morning, Marlon. Yeah, I kind of knew where you're headed with that. In fact, in the quarterly stocks and acreage report, we kind of saw the same thing where a lot of momentum was started to build ahead of the report. And uh, once the reports came out, of course, we, we added to a lot of gains during that session. So uh, beans really taken off and rallying. There is some rumors that you know there's been some buying interest uh, coming into U.S. soy products, uh, particularly soybean meal, soybeans. Of course, these are just rumors at this point in time. But the way the market is acting, it uh, almost indicates that we are going to see some sort of an announcement uh, of someone uh, of significant significance buying our products. But um, you look at the, the fundamentals uh, that we know of last night, crop condition ratings uh, winter in the winter wheat belt continue to drop in states like Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, our three main winter wheat producing states. Uh, we're tied for the lowest on record going back to 1996. The spring wheat crop is very slow to go in. And those two dynamics really don't look to change anytime soon, particularly with the forecast for the hard red wheat belt. It looks to be very dry uh, over the next several weeks and, and, you know, certainly warm about normal for this time of year. But we need uh, a lot of moisture to go along with that wheat crop coming out of dormancy. It's not to be the case. But, you know, in, in that area, you're also looking at uh, 17 to 18 million acres of corn that needs to be seeded and soybeans about 11 million acres. So those are crops that um, I think we probably don't have enough weather premium in the marketplace at this time, regardless of what the report has to say today, uh, a lot of the focus will start to return to uh, planting. And it cer certainly sounds like from talking with producers, there's a lot of uh, producers planting corn right now yep. and will continue through the weekend. Yeah, it sounds like it'll be pretty favorable for the next week or two in much of the uh, Corn Belt. All right, we'll take a break. We'll open up our livestock trade in just a moment. Come on back. All right, now let's take a look at our livestock trade, shall we? Let's see how we're opening up today. Well, on the big board on live cattle. You know, it's kind of similar to how we finished up yesterday. Everything a little higher. We have the June live cattle now 35 cents higher at 164.05 and had a high of 164.27. August up 37 at 163.27. That's about 20 cents or 25 cents off of our earlier high this morning. 
I'll have to check with Brian. That may be more new highs again today. On the feeder cattle market here, we have the May contract up 55 cents at 206.17. Man, we're getting up there in rarefied air. Uh, we have August feeders now up a dime at 223.10. Uh, the deferred contracts beyond that are just, oh, like a nickel higher, not doing much. On the lean hog trade this morning, we have the April down 30 cents. May is down 35 at 82.50. And June is down a couple of pennies, just one tick lower at 89.12. But keep in mind, it did this yesterday. And then everything turned around and, and closed higher on the day. In fact, the entire livestock complex started out lower yesterday. Let's go back to uh, Brian Hoops and uh, talk about this for, for a little bit. So do we have more new highs in cattle today? Yeah, you're right, we do. Uh, across the board, uh, live cattle putting in some new highs again. Uh, no deliveries against the April contract and not really a threat of it at this point in time. Um, if we do rally of the futures quite a bit, then we could maybe see some chances of that. But it really depends on where the cash is going to be in the Southern Plains. For the most part, I think uh, everyone's using 170 as last week's benchmark. And uh, cash is called higher again this week with the show list being smaller. So, yeah, futures trying to price in better cash trade again this week. Uh, boxes are, are starting to catch a little bit. The, the one caveat here, I think, is, is the uh, kill schedules. There was not a great kill on, on Monday. It's probably going to be hard to hit that 650,000 head mark for the week probably around 635 to 640, which is not a bad uh, slaughter pace. But again, it may not lead us to the sharply higher cash trade. But at least these numbers are going to be tight, and they're probably going to continue to tighten up into the, into the late spring and early part of the summer. Are these all-time record highs, or how far away would we be if they're not? Yeah, I don't think they, they quite are. Um, you know, we're, we're knocking on the door of it in these certainly areas that, um, if you go back and look in the charts, it's pretty rarefied air. But just with these tight numbers of, of cattle supplies, feeder cattle supplies, uh, you know, these numbers aren't going to change anytime soon. I think these numbers are kind of here to stay uh, as far as these uh, futures prices go. The always the, the caveat that has been out there is what happens with the black swan event. If we have uh, um, some sort of that we can't expect uh, with the demand side of the equation, that is the thing that could limit us with the consumer spending. But right now, uh, markets are, are moving higher as a packer is willing to pay for this uh, cash market and amid those tight supplies. Oh boy, the old black swan. All right, well, thank you, Brian, for talking with thank us you. and throwing yep. that in there before we got done. I appreciate that. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. He is in Springfield, Missouri. So 